Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take today's top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we're talking to Josh Franks and Alex Mascioli. Josh is the CEO of the data analytics firm, The Tie. Alex Mascioli is host of The Alex Mascioli Show, as well as the head of institutional investment over at Bquant. They're going to take us through their data AI platform and show us how they're able to get notified before a project gets listed on a popular exchange, such as Aragon, Cardano, Maker, OMG, and also massive news that shifts the market, such as Ethereum launching their 2.0, the IOTA Trinity Wallet hack, and the Kyber Ecosystem Report. And how all this early information really puts the institutional investors at a massive advantage. So let's jump right into the office. So today, there was an article that I had talked about previously, a couple of days ago. And it was interesting in how they talked about data, analytics, and how they got everything together. And I thought it was pretty interesting. I shared it with my friend, Alex Mascioli, guy I'm on his uh, show a lot. I like his show because he really uh, rips back the curtain and he kind of shows us what's going on behind the scenes. So when I talked to him about this, he put some information in my head about how analytics actually gets processed and how people are making you know, a good amount. So just as a review, let me go over this real quick. So this is from Fidelity Digital Assets. This was a couple of days ago. They claim a new report that retail investors will turn their attention to digital currency as they become more familiar with Bitcoin and other digital assets, which we all know is going to happen. According to the report, social media and communication platforms, including Twitter, Reddit, Telegram, YouTube, and TikTok are driving the retail adoption of Bitcoin. And they, it says dissemble, but we could say disseminate financial information and advice in a more viral and rapid way. And this is a question that I asked everybody else out there. How do you get your news? Do you go to the big three these days, honestly? Or do you find it someplace in like social media? Do you get it from YouTube? Do you get it from Facebook? Do you get it from TikTok? Or do you get it from Twitter and those types of places? And the people that I talk to, usually they don't trust the mainstream media as much anymore. So as time goes on, they're going to move to these types of ways. And it makes a lot of sense. But then it had me thinking about a, one of the, the different comments that I hear a lot, which is uh, buy the rumor and sell the news. Well, what if you could do both? If you had enough information out there to really get the right, correct information at the right time and beat everybody, I think that's like the big thing. So anyhow, moving on in the article, it says Fidelity Digital Assets was, uh, was careful to note that narratives retail speculators are different. Bitcoin is reflexive and uh, price and sentiment experience a self-reinforcing effect. And this is one of those things that uh, once you see a news article, if you see it soon enough, you can really translate that into how you are investing. The problem is getting that information into your hands at the right time. And that talks about uh, the author's point of data from the tie, which I had no idea who they were. And I thought, okay, uh, it's a sentiment analysis firm. Great. Illustrating that abnormally high mentions of Bitcoin and social media can drive and increase the value of digital currency. So I sent this out to Alex and he said, what a coincidence. I'm actually doing something uh, with Josh Frank, who is the CEO of the tie. And we're putting together uh, a uh, data platform that's going to help a lot, of, a lot of people out there as far as trades and investing. So I actually asked them to come on. So Josh Frank, CEO of the tie, Alex Maschioli from the Alex Maschioli Show and the head of Bquant Institutional oh. Services. Thanks for coming on. Tell me what you guys got. Oh, and my God. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Let Josh open with this, man. He, he's, he's the powerhouse but the, behind data. I'm the powerhouse. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I appreciate you having us on. Um, you know, hopefully after this one, uh, you know who we are. Um, so uh, glad, glad we're able to connect and, you know, find a time. But yeah, so, you know, Alex and I, you know, we're, we're networking, talking, right? And, you know, I, you know, my company is one of the leading providers of data to institutions and hedge funds and crypto. You know, Alex and, and, and Bquant are you know, servicing a lot of the largest institutions for prime brokerage. And, you know, we were kind of going through, you know, what types of clients we service and whether there are opportunities to work together. And, you know, Alex was, was asking me, he's like, hey, Josh, if you can provide all these data, you know, all these, you know, actionable data points to hedge funds, you know, why can't you do the same thing for individuals, right? Why can't you do the same thing for retail investors? You know, crypto is all about democratizing finance and democratizing access to financial instruments for all. Why can't we bring that to the masses? And, you know, my response was like, you know, we're making a lot of money from our institutional clients. There's an edge with all this data. But, you know, after months, Alex basically convinced me that, hey, we got to do something together. We got to partner together and, and we have to bring this information to the masses. 
So basically, Alex, you know, had this idea of launching a platform called Trade the Chain, where basically we take a lot of the the data and actionable analytics that we're servicing to to large hedge fund clients, uh, and 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 bring it to you know the everyday investor, um, right? You know, limited to a number of people that sign up. There's a limit that we have in place. You know, not everybody will be able to get access, but you know, the first few thousand people that sign up will be able to access the platform. And what the platform basically combines is a few different things. The first is quantified sentiment data. So what does that mean? Basically, what we do is we ingest a billion tweets, literally one billion tweets a day directly from Twitter. And what we're basically trying to do is quantify how positive or negative investors are about those tweets. So there's a whole process. And you know, I don't need to get go through it now. Yeah. Uh, but if you look us up online, you can, you can find it. But basically, we ingest a tweet. We, we basically try to assess whether that tweet is relevant to an asset like Ethereum or like Litecoin. We remove all the spam and we have a patented 13-step process for doing it. And then we score every single word and every tweet individually. We basically sum, summate the, you know, the value of all the words in those tweets and we create actionable metrics. So an example is we have a daily sentiment score from 0 to 100. And if it's at you know, 95, for example... That means that you know sentiment is is sig- significantly more positive today about a particular asset than versus the last twenty days. What we've seen is that there's a very strong correlation between positive sentiment, positive Twitter activity, uh, with price movement. And we have you know quantitative hedge funds paying us you know tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to get access to that information to trade off of these signals. And so we decided to partner with Alex and to bring a lot of those signals and that information to to everyone. And that's kind of the background you know story here. So then, so then, Alex, you you just approached Josh. You guys worked together and just said, "Okay, we want to uh, ingest all this data, and then we want to spit out something that is uh, relatable, people can understand, and is accurate." Because here's the thing: here's here's my big question. Every time uh, I get bombarded with with different things, but my my big question always is, "Well, what makes this one different? What makes this one you know good and actually workable and is actually accurate?" So, talk about that real quick. Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> First of all, let me just tell you, it took a lot of convincing uh, to get to get him on board. I mean, as he mentioned earlier, both our firms are on the institutional side. And you kind of feel like uh, you almost have that insider edge, right? Because you're talking to the uh, hedge funds, you're talking to the prop desk, and you know what, you know, where, where the big games are really being played. When, when Josh and I were talking initially, I mean, and he's supplying some of the same hedge funds I deal with and know and, and their data and I know their returns and what they're doing. I'm like, you know something, man, I, I just, I wish regular people knew what we were talking about or knew the information that we were dealing with because, it, it, listen, we follow crypto Twitter and we, we follow YouTube and stuff like that where the retail people uh, you know, suck in a lot of data. And we were like, wow, we, we actually know a lot. Like we're kind of blessed. And so anyway, I, I just, you know, the, the tie is one of those preeminent agencies that's been around for, you know, a decade and, and the crypto arm for the last handful of years. Um, and I knew the fund managers that were trading off the data. And so that's where I basically uh supplied him with a lot of drinks when i talked him into it and <laughs> he's and, also he's also fixing i have all this you know this terrible wall which he likes to make fun of all the time so i've got next time you hear from me this will be covered with a ton of of new cool sports memorabilia and swag so there's a lot that there's a lot beyond drinks that went into this but i think that's all his um, but yeah, I mean, it was basically to say, hey, we're going to, if you're willing to do this, Josh, I want to make something for the regular retail guy where I just want to package an easy to use interface, easy to disseminate uh, information, not, com- you know, not confuse them with a bunch of stuff and make it actionable that it actually makes a difference in their life in crypto. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing that we both agreed is, look, a lot of the funds that we work with in the institutions you know, they maybe want to see 50 or 100 different pieces of data. But, you know, even with them, they come back to us constantly, what do I do with it? What's the most important? What should I be looking at? We realize that the most important thing is making it digestible, making it easy to understand, making it easy to use, but making it actionable. So we kind of, you know, we focused when we were supplying data to, uh, to Alex's platform, we focused on two things which really moved the market. Um, the first is, one of the technologies that we have is basically ingesting information from thousands of sources in real time. We parse through SEC filings and court cases and regulatory rulings and updates from exchanges and tokens and 
everything. And, and what our technology basically able to do is go out to those sources every few seconds and pull on in that information. And we're actually using that information to power not just the biggest hedge funds, but the biggest media companies in crypto are literally writing breaking news stories using our data. So we have news companies in crypto that have 70 reporters on our software. They're using my software to get the story because I get it before anybody else. And so among price movers, you know, Alex and I you know, discussed in exchange listings are just the biggest one. When a token gets listed on Coinbase or Binance or any of the largest exchanges, you know, we've seen times where the price goes up by 30%, 40%, 50%, and 60% within an hour. We realized that if there was one signal that we really had to get into the hands of everybody, it was exchange listings. And so one of the core features of the product is both on the dashboard and then in actually channels like Slack channels that you can subscribe to that are part of your membership, you actually find out about exchange listings in real time. And some of the crazier ones we've seen is like, we had a Binance listing the other day where we picked that up and pushed it through the Slack channel 20 minutes before they tweeted about it. And that exchange listing moved the price that asset up by 40%. I mean, just think about that informational advantage that you have getting it 20 minutes in advance. Right. And, 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 you know, we kind of, you know, think of it as one of those signals can pay for an entire annual subscription. We're sending like three or four a day. And that's just one of the features of the product. So we're also alerting, you know, on things like staking announcements. We're showing large on chain transactions. So to see flows in and out of exchange. And then most importantly, you know, we're giving you the sentiment data, right? We have a, you can see it on right now, which coins are seeing the biggest surges in Twitter activity. Uh, and really kind of giving you that insider informational edge. That's, I mean, this is literally the same data that we're selling to our fund clients at the same speed. There is no latency. Rob, we're not. I, I told you he was a powerhouse. He's, he, he, he came on excited. Mm -hmm. He just steamrolled through the whole thing. The I whole mean, we're thing. done, right? This is it. We, we just uh, said everything. You can always, there's a lot of information to digest. I think that's why Josh does his job so well, because that's what he does, right? He digests a ton of information and spits it out. This is true. But before you get into that, the whole thing, it was what I was thinking of. I was like, well, if it goes to like a coin telegraph, all these things, couldn't we just wait for uh, these things to come out as far as like the news channels? Couldn't we just wait for that and then get the information? But, but you answered yeah, it because, because you said, hey, uh, we actually get these things 20 minutes before they tweet. And I know how long it takes to push out information, right? On my YouTube channel, it's going to take me at least a couple hours to get some information from coin telegraph to edit it, get it up to YouTube to people actually know it. And when I actually put it on YouTube, people are like, hey, I didn't hear about that. That's thank you so much. So you're telling me, let me get this straight. You're able to get this information on a listing 20 minutes before it goes out in a tweet? Not, not always. So just to clarify, okay. not always, but a lot of the time we are. We've had a few recently where we've been 40 minutes early or 30 minutes early. And the reason that we're able to get that early is because we have basically robots that are going out to every single corner of the internet. And they're hitting every site every few seconds. And the second we see an update, we pull in that information. So, for example, we see on Binance's Zendesk help forum that there's a new asset there or in their API. Like, we're actually calling their API every few seconds. We see a new pair that's listed. We then have a natural language processor. I don't need to get into it, but basically AI technology that pulls that in and categorizes it and says, this is a listing. So we pull that information in real time, goes through our AI right away. It says, this is a listing. And then boom, we ping you on Slack. So the second it hits our system, it gets pinged to our customers. So they know, you know, both in the dashboard, but then also like it, you can actually get it on your phone or anywhere else that, hey, this asset just got listed, go action on it. And what we're focused on doing is, you know, with, with you know, you mentioned one publication, right? Um, you know, you go on these publications, there's a million news stories. There's a million things on Twitter. How do you know what to do? You know, with us, what we're focused on with Alex is, you know, unlike a lot of our institutional customers that want a million pieces of information, here we're focused on what actually matters the most and delivering that, delivering that to you right away on your phone, on your computer, wherever you are, like any time of the day so that you can take advantage of that opportunity. Gotcha. So, so when you guys showed me this, when, when you showed me the program, the first thing I said is, I don't know why they're showing this to me. I'm not a trader. I don't really care. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. And then when I looked at it and I go, well, first of all, is it accurate? Because I get, I get approached by other places. So uh, first thing I did was I, I sat down with it for a couple hours, uh, two nights ago. And I just watched the data as it came in because, it, because to me, it's all our sentiment. And what was interesting that you said uh, when, you, when we were talking, Josh, is you said that you guys have the direct API to Twitter, which I think you said there's only like four companies that actually have that. Huh? There are four, 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 
we're, we're the only company in cryptocurrency that has it and one of four financial data companies globally. Right. So when I was looking at all this information that was parsed out, and it makes it pretty easy. So I'm like, okay, again, not a trader. I don't know why they show this to me. But then as I was looking at it, I thought to myself, well, no, that's not true because I dollar cost average. And if I can dollar cost average, instead of me just picking a random day and a random time and just letting Voyager or letting uh, Gemini, well, Gemini and Voyager do it, I can actually look at this data and go, okay, it's going to drop by X percentage. This is when I'm going to dollar cost average. So I can actually save myself one to five, seven percent and go down on the slide. So even for a DCA person, it's pretty good. Investors, I think it's a big thing. Whatever they want to do. I've always talked about. I think uh, for investors, one of the big things is also just managing your risk, right? Like, like no people become incredibly negative. Thing. We're also pushing out like these articles. So if the Wall Street Journal puts out something that a token is, has a lawsuit against or anything like that, being able to manage your risk and get out of a position if you need to is also a massive advantage as well, right? It's not just to make money, but it's also to keep yourself from losing money. That's a good point. So let's do this. Let's put, uh, let's let the, the rubber meet the road. Let's take a look at what this is, what's going on. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Let me pull over here. Brave. Share. And what you sent to me, which is pretty cool, this is some history about these notifications that would, that would go out from uh, uh, Trade the Chain. And what I thought was great was I didn't have to log in and go just watch it all day long because I got stuff to do. I got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> I thought it was cool because like when you said you, like, you're going to get access to the Slack channel, they're going to send you notifications on your phone. All you got to do is just admit them and then here we go. So this one was, walk me through this real quick. This is Aragon Project. And it was listed yes. on OKX. <laughs> so yeah, well, speaking of OKX, but yeah. but Aragon got listed in one day. It got listed on Huobi OKX and Binance. We notified our clients right away. Within the day, it rose from four dollars above eight dollars. So it was over an one hundred percent gain within like a twenty-four to forty-eight hour period. We notified our clients right away, and you can see that second giant line up there is actually a Binance listing, and you can see that too is right before the Binance listing. And that too is right when we picked it up. And there was a couple minutes in between when we picked it up and the price just spiked up from like four fifty to $8 right away. And so, you know, um, you know, our customers, you know, our institutional customers were ab all able to take advantage of that opportunity, Perfect. which is, you know, part of the reason that you see this giant spike. Got me. Walk me through this one. Cardano. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, another, uh, you know, another listing, uh, where Cardano got listed on crypto.com. Um, which kind of, you know, led a, you know, a, a pretty big bull run. It wasn't as, as quick of a movement, but, but it, it kind of coincided with, you can see that that light blue line is increased in Twitter activity. So after it got listed and started to get shared around, there was a big spike in Twitter activity around Cardano as well. Gotcha. Cardano again, this was, it was a launch date for the Shelly net or the Shelly news. Right. And you can just see when our system ingested that information and picked it up and what happened to price. So you can see we're getting that information before there's any price movement. Okay. Same thing here. ETH 2.0 launch, same type of thing. IOTA wallet. Now this was interesting. Uh, this one, the IOTA, uh, don't use the Trinity wallet. Something happened here. Oh, there was a hacker attack. So this is when IOTA got, yeah, IOTA got hacked. And it also shows you just how slow the market is to news, right? The fact that the price of IOTA went back, went, continued to go up for an hour, but we had the news about the IOTA hack well before, and it got, it crashed, right? And so you know, even though it went up for the first hour, you know, we had the news before it was disseminated. Um, and you can just see the rest of the market didn't, which is how, you know, our clients were able to take advantage of that information. Gotcha. Kyber, same thing. Ecosystem report came out. Looks like it was pretty positive. You must have done something with the, the bots crawling through the information. Yeah, yeah, same thing. You know, we're p parsing through everything on the internet. Like anyone that could possibly mention crypto. Um, you know, here's another example. Look how early we had that maker, you know, launching on Coinbase Pro. 10 minutes before there was any price movement. And look, the price went up from 340 to 460. Yeah. Um, and right, was, that's a, yeah, that's pretty massive. And then it, it just, it just goes through. Uh, there's some more examples. You got OMG over here. There was a synthetics, same type of thing. So yeah. So look pretty good to me, but I'll be honest. I'm all, I'm all skeptical. So uh, this is trade the chain. So walk me through this, this, this setup, because what I liked about it was, uh, when I first got into crypto, what I heard was you can only make money trading and you, and you have to listen to us because we know exactly what it is. And uh, I tried to do that and it was just a disaster. 
and one of the things was I couldn't digest the information because it was very uh, cumbersome. So what do we got here? Yeah, so Alex, do you want to do you want to take this one or you want me to go for it? No, no, go for it. You're on a roll because <clears throat> I know Josh has limited time with us, about five more minutes. And yeah. so, yeah, no, take it away uh, through the explainer. Yeah, so here's the really quick three-minute explanation. So at the top, what you're looking at is total market cap of crypto, how that's changing, the average sentiment score across every coin, uh, how trading volume is changing, and how tweet volume is changing. And today, we can see... You know, there's a big drop in Twitter activity. There's a big drop in, in, in trading activity. Um, market cap is down. We also see sentiment on Ethereum is really bearish. We show Ethereum and Bitcoin at the top, and Ethereum is actually down 2.2%. Bitcoin is also below 50, which means bearish. Um, but what you can see here as well is the hottest tokens on Twitter. So we can see uh, basically what that tweet shows you is how many more or less tweets does a token have today. Um, and, and more tweets doesn't necessarily always mean positive, but it usually means there's a big price movement going on. It's something that's worth taking a look at. Yeah, some um, way, right? It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. Exactly. Okay, so let's take a look. It means yeah, I got gotcha. you. So how about this for coins? Just to, this, is, this is to me the, the meat and potatoes of what's going on here. Yeah, and, and so that lets you see different measures of sentiment over different periods of time. Long term is a 200-day look back, it looks at the last 50 days versus the previous 200. So that's not, you shouldn't be looking at daily movement. But if you're looking at longer term allocations, it's a much more interesting metric to consider in your investment decisions. I really like the relative tweet volume and relative trading volume metrics on your right there. Um, and what that shows you is, you know, how much more, how, how many uh, conversations is something having today versus average? How much trading volume does something have today versus average? Uh, and it's a really great way to spot opportunities. And something that I really recommend for technical traders, you know, a lot of technical traders will spend, um, you know, hours and hours and hours going through charts trying to find something interesting. Whereas here, if you're a technical trader, you just go, you sort by what's got the most tweet volume, what's the most positive, what has the most trading volume. Um, and you can, you know, right off the bat kind of see, you know, uh, you know, different potential opportunities. Um, you know, you can also customize the columns, you can set favorites yeah. on the homepage, you know, on Spotlight, you can see which tokens are most positive or negative. And on the right bar there, you can see alerts, um, which you can pop over. Um, in there, you can toggle between you know, large uh, liquidations on BitMEX, uh, lar well alerts, but then also significant news, which are like listings. So for example, you know, I would just uh, click on the well one more time so that it disappears. Um, you know, here we can see Wrap Bitcoin launching on Coinbase Pro, Binance listing Filecoin, right? You can see even today, we're still in today and, uh, and yesterday, and there's like already five, um, you know, five just within the last day, um, you know, significant listings and opportunities to trade off of. Gotcha. And then last thing, this, this one hour projected range. Yeah. So that basically is a 90% confidence interval that we create that basically says, given sentiment and price volatility with 90% confidence, where do we think the price of an asset's going to go within the next hour? So I use that more referentially versus actually trading off of it, but it's a really good way to kind of gauge what the, what our data scientists are telling us, right? Because our data scientists are building these models. And right, what they're saying is basically with 90% confidence, we think the price of Harmony is going to be between down 0.3% and up 5.4% within the next hour, which to me, that looks bullish. Combining that with going on in the market that you're looking at, or even just looking here, you know, to me, that may, may mean, hey, maybe there's an opportunity to, you know, make a play on this asset. Gotcha. So uh, I know time is short, and I will just say this. I was actually looking through this the last two nights. I shared it with a friend. Sorry, I had to. And uh, I said, George, I go, George, look at this. Check the, check the numbers because he's at home right now because he has not work because of uh, COVID. And I say, you know what, man? He goes, they're mostly right. Not everything's going to be perfect, but a lot of them, a lot of them are right, which is crazy. So uh, let's wrap it up. Thanks, guys, so much for being here. I appreciate it. There is going to be a link. And what's great about this, Alex, I appreciate that uh, it's a 14-day love it or leave it uh, type of, opera, type of uh, uh, price. So uh, it's, it's $99 a month. Like Josh has said, if you use them, it could probably just one, one two, three trades, you'll probably pay for it. Plus, if you don't love it after 14 days, no questions asked, money back guarantee. Can't get better than that. Good? Yeah. Rob, thank you for having Good. us on, man. Really appreciate it.
All right, let's uh, take a look at the comments. Gentlemen, I gotta go, thanks so much. All right, so that's it. So hopefully that uh, helps you out about what's going on. I'm gonna leave the uh, link in the description below. So go check that out if you want to. And uh, if you like those types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right, not for sure. YouTube kind of controls all that. And that is it for today. So I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you on the next one.